What's up guys, welcome to the video. So on today's video, I'm gonna cut a pixie haircut. Now, I haven't done that in a while. I was thinking I wanted to do something nice and short, something a little more triangular, push some weight to the face. We also create some disconnection in this cut as well. Uh, a lot of people say they have trouble cutting short hair. So I think this is a video, if you guys do have struggle with it, or if you're looking for some new tips, uh, new thoughts, new ideas on cutting short hair, this is the video for you. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. Welcome to the video guys. Today on the video, we are going to cut a triangular pixie haircut. Now the sectioning is pretty simple. I go right at the parting. So she's got a right hand side parting and then I curve from that, uh, the, the back point of that around across the uh, parietal ridge. And that creates kind of like a little triangle on the top. So uh, sections off the heavy side of the haircut. Then what I do is I go straight down center back and I start working these diagonal forward partings to create our back section. Now, everything I'm doing is coming straight out from the head. I don't wanna build up weight at this point. So just be very cautious of that. So diagonal forward parting, fingers stay parallel to the head, working out at 90 degrees, uh, cutting with my scissor. Scissor I'm using is the Matt Beck scissor. This is the five inch, five inches now in stock. So check that out on freesaloneducation.com. I'm just working uh, those partings forward. I'm also using the YS Park 339 comb, which I really love for these precision cuts because it's got nice tight teeth uh, when I'm working with precise small sections uh, to get nice tension on there. So I'm working that through. Notice as I start to work above the occipital bone area, that's when my elevation will change only because the head shape is changing. I'm pretty much keeping that same straight out, straight towards me uh, over direction, but because the head shape starts to peel away, my elevation changes and it starts to build up weight. I really want that weight on there. The thing is you have to be very careful with how much weight you actually want to distribute within this haircut. If she's got really thick hair, then I wanna make sure that I keep that elevation nice and high, a little bit higher than I would in this case where the, the client would have medium density hair. So just working my way forward. Parting stay the same, elevation changes, over direction is coming back, that's gonna start that triangular feel. So notice I go right over um, that back low crown area and then I work my way forward and I kind of twist my finger angle to go towards the head shape. So I come straight back with this section, watch me cut, I cut that straight across. Then um, as I start to twist down, now my finger angle shifts, so see how my fingertips are kind of away from the head and the back of my finger, the bottom part of my finger is towards the ear. That's just, I'm angling in because I want it to go nice and tight into the head shape at that point. So I'm building up some weight at the top and then tucking it in nice and tight towards the ear. So this part is straight out from the head. So there's nothing really to, uh, there's no magic happening. It's just taking a, a nice diagonal forward parting and bringing it straight out from the head and you get that kind of forward effect on the hair. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. The biggest difference here is my fingers are now pointing down. I've talked about this in many videos, but I'm not going to sit here and think that you guys have watched all of them or even any of them. So um, with this cut, uh, I work the one side, my fingers facing up, but then when I work this side, the opposite side, my fingers are facing down and that's all because of the combing uh, of the section. So I'm combing my new hair. So I pick up the new hair with the comb. You can see it there. Then what I do is I pull that new hair into my guideline. So if I were to cut it the other way, it would be pretty uncomfortable but I would also be pushing that guide uh, into the new hair. So I would get an inconsistent guideline. Um, and the reason we have a guide is to make sure that we have a consistent haircut, right? So I just wanna make sure I stay consistent with how I'm combing the hair, where I'm combing the hair to, to get a more successful result. Now the same thing is happening here, over directing everything back. Um, the elevation changes again because uh, of the head shape change. And you can see there, um, it's, a, it's a nice probably 45 degree elevation at this point, but then I tuck my finger in to get it nice and tight to the head. So watch um, as I take half this section, I bring it up, it's elevated more high. And then when I grab that last bit of the section, I tuck my finger in just a little bit and I get it tighter to the head.
I know sometimes in these videos I repeat myself, but I want to make sure that you guys really kind of get what's happening. So look at the top of my finger and how that's angling away. So my finger is pretty much parallel to the temple. But that doesn't mean it's parallel all the way through. And I think a lot of people will follow the head shape on there and then they don't get a weight line. And when you don't have a weight line, you don't have any shape. So with these shorter haircuts, I want to have that shape. I want to have a little bit of a weight line throughout. This is the weak side. So you can see that kind of buildup of weight. Uh, it really balances out the haircut. Now I'm going to go through on the top and I'm going to overdirect everything back. So what that's going to do for me is push a lot of the weight to the front. Uh, it'll give me a little bit of disconnection. It'll add some balance to the haircut. And also um, it'll give me that kind of triangular feel of that weight sitting in the front of the head shape. On that over direction back, I'm keeping my finger parallel. So uh, it's just a nice back over direction, stationary guide. I'm not traveling at all, bringing everything back to that point and cutting it. You can see on the overhead view there. So now look at that nice little push. Now I go in with my Ergo round brush, uh, also available on Free Salon Education. If you need a round brush, go check it out. Um, Love this round brush, it's got an extra long handle and it's also got an extra long barrel. So especially for really long hair, I love it because you can do a lot more hair at once. So now I'm using the Joyco Hair Shake. Now this is a really cool product. It's a liquid two powder texturizing finisher. I love it because it dries super fast. So you spray it in the dry hair and it adds a ton of texture to your style and volume. So those of you guys out there that have a, a skinnier fabric of hair, this is a great product to spray in and get that full, full effect. So hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your comments and I'd love to comment back. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, and like always, if you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. I got new videos coming out all the time. And also, if it's been a while since you went to freesaloneducation.com, you can purchase the scissor I used on this video, the combs, the clips, the brushes, everything that I use, you can get on there. Also, click the video link on that website and it'll take you right to FSE On Demand. You can download our app. So again, guys, I hope you like the video. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.